Welcome to the Padawans podcast. I am your host, Lucas Egan, and with me, my co-host, David Block. What's up, guys? Man, this show, I tell you what, we have been wanting to put this out for a while now. Uh, this podcast, what is it going to be about, you think? It's going to be about all things Star Wars, but mainly it's going to be a deep dive of the Star Wars, the Clone Wars, yes. the 2008 killer that leads up to Revenge of the Sith. It's by far one of my favorite shows, even though it's animated. But here's the thing. We need to learn a little bit more about myself and David. David, what was your first experience with Star Wars? Dude, all right, so... When I was, I don't know, six-ish, seven-ish, Clone Wars came out. It was God's gift to Earth. Thank you, George Lucas, mm -hmm. our Heavenly Father. Yep. Uh, it Mind-blowing. I don't care what the haters say. It's a great freaking movie. When Darth Maul brings out that second lightsaber, oh, uh, that was my first experience. Um, I actually think I watched like one, two, three before I saw four, five, six. Um or maybe, I don't know, my, my parents probably had it on like VHS or DVD or something yeah. like that. But I mean, we were young, right? That was a, mm -hmm. that was 22 years ago now. Holy cow that that movie came out. Wow. Um, never saw Clone Wars. I've seen like a couple episodes, like scrolling through Cartoon Network back in the day, back when it was originally on air. Uh, but I haven't seen the show yet. Um, this will be my first time watching the Clone Wars Uh Whereas, I mean, you've seen it multiple times, right? Yes. Uh, so, so, so tell me about like, where are you in your fandom? How, how far deep are you? So uh, you could say I'm kind of a sweaty, which is the equivalent <laughs> of a nerd. Um, I, my first exposure was, yes, the Phantom Menace in, in uh, well, actually, I watched some of the VCRs. I don't really remember, but I just know that they were accessible to my family. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but my first theater experience at watching a movie was watching The Phantom Menace like you. So we grew up in the prequel era where we're, we love the prequels. And it doesn't really matter what you're going to say to us. We enjoy those movies. They're good um, movies. I don't, they're, Clone Wars might be my favorite Star Wars movie. I'm just saying. And yeah. you can't change my mind. No, yeah. And uh, so that that's kind of my exposure. I my fandom goes far deeper than some. I, I know more. There's a lot of knowledge in this head that probably is like. All right, let's go down the checklist. Let's go down okay. like the levels. OK, OK. You've seen all the movies. Yes. You've seen all the Clone Wars. Yes. Have you read comic books? Yes. Have you read book books? Yes. OK, canon and non-canon. You know all of it, right? Oh, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell my the, tell the listeners. So I just got out. So the newest book from the High Republic era, The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott, just came out. Which like today. just came out. Came out today. Um, I'm currently 10 chapters in. Uh, it's great. Um, if you're not reading the High Republic, I I highly it's, encourage you to. It's canon great. or not canon. It's canon. It's canon. It's canon. Okay. And to, okay, so going forward, just for clarification, there's canon. Canon, then, then there's, there's legends. Legends. And legends, legends is, is le like like the Knights of the Old Republic game is currently legends, even though there are rumors that they're going to. Well, no, there's not rumors. They are recreating it oh. re -re for a canon version. And okay. the Old Republic is also mentioned in one of the other High Republic books. So um, like the Seth Empire is technically canon. Revan's canon. Um, Malgus is canon. You've 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 done all of it. Yeah, I've pretty okay, much done all this? of it. How about like so? The seventh layer of hell is like, have you dressed as a Jedi for things or for things? Halloween, yeah, would be even worse. But Halloween, yeah. Uh, my okay, mom, yeah. my mom created uh, a, a she, homemade, she, yeah, homemade Anakin you Skywalker. I was before it was cool. Yeah, I would. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I was a cosplayer before it was cool. You're yes. absolutely right. Um, but yeah, I uh, really, really enjoy. I enjoy Star Wars. Star Wars is like my escape from reality because we all need something to get out of reality, and I think okay. it's a great thing to get away from. You know, it's it is one of the best fandoms. I think I've always liked Star Wars. 
but the there's such a high threshold of access to get into Star Wars. Yes. Up until quarantine, up until Disney Plus came out, which is where I, which is I think where this started to come from, right? Yeah. Is is you and you and me met? Uh, we met a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, and right away, I mean, that was one of the first things we talked about. Is like, oh, dude, like, oh, you like Star Wars? Well, what about Clone Wars? Have you seen Clone Wars yet? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that that's where this really came from is yeah. you and me saying like, oh, well, if these are conversations we're going to have anyways, let's just put it let's on get camera. a podcast. Yeah. Why not? I mean, everyone's doing it, right? Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing that's going to make us different. You have never you have seen bits and pieces of the show. So it's going to be like you're my Padawan and I'm your master. The, I'm the pod one. Uh, yeah, you are the pod one. Let's <laughs> see what I did there. See, so I mean, guys, we're just here to have fun. Uh, you guys can follow along. We're going to be doing uh, episodes uh, every Tuesday. Um, and let's just get into it. Episode one. Um, for clarification, so for those that don't know, this Clone Wars takes place in between episodes two and three. Um, and this is during the Clone Wars. This is kind of like your introduction into what's going on in between those two movies. Where so where does this tie in with the Clone Wars animated movie? So the animated movie is part it was actually an arc in the show, what uh -huh. it was originally supposed to be. But they wanted to get it out to kind of get the masses going, and it kind of flopped because it's an animated, not everybody is into it. It didn't animated. do very well. It didn't. It didn't do very well. See, I liked it. I saw that movie when it came out. I thought the, it was really good. Yeah, and I I mean, it's Star... I, I'm not going to dislike anything that's Star Wars. It's really... We'll get into movies in, 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 some, in some form of another in probably a while. But, like, I enjoy them for what they are. I enjoy all the content for what they are, whether I, in, whether I agree with everything or disagree with anything. Because you know what? It doesn't really matter because I'm not making the decisions, so I just have to live with it. So, right. so season one, episode one, ambush. Yes. So, Directed Dave Bullock, written by or written by Stephen Milking. Yep. So the synopsis is basically uh, Jedi Master Yoda is on a secret mission to forge a treaty with uh, the king of Toydaria, um, which Toydarians are what Watto is, is the type of species that Watto is in episode one. So that's a Toydarian. Um, us, who, who's Watto? Watto is the slaver that owns Anakin in episode one. Okay, okay. The little uh, the little winged amphibian looking dude. Yeah, the, the only money guy. Only money. So Yoda is traveling in a ship when it's uh, ambushed by the Separatists uh, by Count Dooku. Uh, Yoda and three other clone troopers must face off against Count Dooku's dreaded assassin, Ventress, Asajj Ventress, who was actually in the 2003 micro series. Um, so that's a little bit of a deep dive for you. If you want to go check that out, that's on Disney plus two. Maybe we'll get into that, uh, series. Um, but, uh, so basically Ventress shows up, um, makes a deal saying if Yoda is able to, uh, bring down every, uh, droid, um, uh, then you can join the Republic. If not, then you're, you're a on asterisk. the separate side. Asterix, the, yep. the king of the Toydarians yep. says, as long as it's a fair fight, yes. I'm all about it. Yep, 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 yep. But come to find out, it's not a fair fight. She throws everything she's got at this guy. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, so, so I just want to quit make a quick mention. Uh, I don't know if you catch in the opening scenes, Count Dooku actually, it looks like he's in Jabba's palace making a deal. Did you catch that? So, that's Is actually that in the movie. Later? That's in the oh. movie. That's in the and movie. It's been so long. I need to go back and watch it. So basically, the synopsis is Jabba's son gets taken, and Count Duke is behind it, and he's trying to get because the Republic and the Separatists are trying to get access to hyperspace lanes. 
that are controlled by the huts. So they're trying to got both it. sides are trying to get the huts to allow them to go through their territory. Got it. Got it. Um, that's why uh, Dooku is in Jabba's palace. Okay. Um, so uh, we cut to the moon side. Um, Asaz Ventress approaches the local Toydarians and offers uh, a counter treaty. Uh, Count Dooku, if those that have never seen Star Wars, was the apprentice apprentice to uh, Jedi Master Yoda. Um, he how, is. How, a, where does that put? Sorry, where does that put Asajj Ventress? So Ventress technically would is a dark assassin, but um, Count Dooku pretty much uses her as his apprentice. Um, Which is there, technically against the Sith yes, code, correct? Yes. Uh huh. So when Sith is so Sith is the rule of two. There's only one master, and there's only an apprentice. No more, no less. You all will hear that in two. In well, if you've watched episode one, Yoda mentions it. Um. So Asajj Ventress technically is technically is not a Sith. She's a dark assassin. Mm-hmm. Um. Just to clarify that up. Um, so there are a couple of things that, um, are interesting about this episode. Um, Yoda in particular, uh, he has a feel of, it's like a mixture between prequel Yoda and episode five Yoda. I don't know if you noticed that in his dialogue, he mentions a in that lot episode of episode five. He's a little quirky. Yes, he's quirky. Like, um, I forget what he says, but he basically says something like what he would say to Luke in, in Dagobah. Like, the clone had a was like, "Well, how are we going to beat them?" And he's like, "Uh, it doesn't matter what the si- your size. Well, the size matters not." Line is said. Um, so I thought I really enjoyed that part of Yoda because I thought it was interesting that they put those two together. Um. Obviously, this is a kid's show, so they had to throw in some some humor. Uh, a clanker tells the other uh, droids that he's a terrible shot, which is funny because we make the droids out to be stormtroopers, but they're actually they're probably pro- deadlier than stormtroopers. So he's so three three minutes thirty four seconds in. He he tells the other clanker he's a terrible shot, but that's because he's programmed that way, which is strange. Because so I didn't program to miss is that I mean they, that's what he says. That's, I know that, it's for comedic effect, but taking it at face value, yeah, that's it, that's pretty bad. I mean, that's kind of like <laughs> are the are the stormtroopers kind of supposed to be like that? Who knows? Um, so at the six thirty mark, Yoda, uh, as is your enemy to reach your, our goal, a straight path we will not follow. So basically, he's saying. So in context, they all see. So after they make the bet, the droids come from one direction and they land where they're supposed to be. Yoda is saying, hey, let's try to use our our advantages here. They're not able to get all of their heavy cool. machinery in the in the um, in the tanks. And so they have to bring in battle droids, which is a disadvantage to them. The clones want to go straight for. Yep, the, the straight for the re- king. Yep, straight for the Yoda rendezvous said, point. Hey, man, this this isn't the way. We 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 need to avoid this these droids. Yes, and they absolutely. do absolutely. Yeah, and they do, and it's and it's and it's very much like Co- Yoda's character to do that, mm-hmm. um, especially from the originals and the in the prequels. He's very much the same kind of uh, Jedi throughout the entire thing. Um. At seven, the seven fifty seven mark, a clanker ye- uh, yeets a AAT into heavy vegetation. I missed that. For it. They're going uh, for it. Yeah, they are. They 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 try to get through and they can't. Um. So and then they eventually send in, uh, battle droids and droidicas and uh, B one battle droids to, um, get the clones and Yoda. Um, the B one battle droids, the the gray more. So the the gray bros. the gray the gray ones are B twos. The uh-huh. the 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 regular ones from episode one are B ones. Okay, and uh, how about this? So mm-hmm. so there's there's the regular uh, droids, the, yeah. the tan looking guys. Then there's yes. the guys with the yellow on them. Those are pilots, right? They're pilots or commanders. Okay, what about the green ones that are in this? Green ones, see the the I think that's rank. So like general 
to well most of the general well it goes command droid commando droids are the ones that um basically and you'll learn this in in later seasons they use more command droids to make position and do strategy Mm -hmm. um so i think the colors are just based on rank like captain uh lieutenant ranger kind of like that so i think that's what uh those are used for um so yoda and and the clones are pinned down at one point um one of them is injured in the fight uh so basically yoda goes ham starts doing episode two stuff flipping and doing stuff and picking up people and throwing them into each other and and he ignites his lightsaber for the first time in the series he doesn't and that and and honestly he doesn't really ignite his lightsaber very often in the series believe it oh, or do we not. go on to find out that he's relative relatively a pacifist uh he, sort of I, i'm not gonna try to spoil it for you all okay. that okay. i haven't watched okay. it okay. but it's it's very interesting i i just remembered that that doesn't happen a whole lot so that's that's this is really something that they wanted I mean, to you he, he really i i feel like just from this first episode right mm-hmm. i feel like when we watch his force powers i mean he he cuts a, a, hole, a hole open in one of the tanks and literally just like pulls out a uh pulls out the, the metal core of it or like mm-hmm. you see him pick up one of the droids and that makes the droid start firing upon its own guys or yeah or even like at the end man and he goes down to slice down on a side interest Mm-hmm. And literally, like, stops her in, in mid track. Yep. I feel like his force powers in this episode, just in the first episode, are way, way more than you see in any of the movies. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, it just goes to show they're trying to show you that this is the reason why he's the grandmaster. Uh, but I, so, so how much of it do you think is the animation is just so much easier to animate versus it's so like, much easier to animate and make it look good. Cause I don't, um, do you, so do you remember um, the, the final fight scene in revenge the, of the Sith episode two clone? Wars. Oh yeah. No, the attack of the clones. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the, uh, that giant pile on file falls down and uh, it's about to land on, on Luke and on Anakin and he, yeah. It, Anakin and everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Sorry. He does no, yeah. everything he can do to stop it and get out of the way. Just barely. Versus yeah. in this thing, like he's literally just like picking up droids yeah. and just like laser fire. I mean, them. there's not much. So basically my thought is um, animation is easier to do than live action, especially with CGI, because everything's already uh, already computer generated anyways. Um, so adding the actions for an animatro- anima- uh, uh, animation is... I mean, I could be completely wrong. It could be a whole lot harder, but to me, it just feels like it could be easier. And the point from a story point, you want to show how Yo- how powerful Yoda really is and how much he can really do. Um, so I think that was probably the draw of what Dave and George were trying to do with this first episode. I mean, this is this is the second second time we've ever seen him yep. in canon yep. actually in a battle, correct? Yes. He, um, he's in as- a... He's in a fight with Count Dooku in Clone Wars, and then this is the next time we ever get to see him in a battle. Yep, as of right now. Right. um, uh, He's in the High Republic era because he's like 600 years old. Mm -hmm. We all have to Mm -hmm. remember he's about 900 years old when he dies in the original trilogy. So he's in the High Republic era. So as of right now, from what I've seen in canon, uh, there's only been a handful of times where he's actually shown his power. So... um, that's that's a good point um and then kind of the biggest thing so so everybody thinks that animation is just for kids there are subtle undertones of like really good adult storytelling in here oh holy cow and yes. and when and when i think one part is when yoda asks the the clones to take off their helmets and they say their names rise jack um and the other one, I can't remember their name. Fear, um, fire, and fear. Uh, they all, they're like, well, we're we're all kind of similar. It's, it's just the same face. And then Yoda goes, "You're not the same to me. You're all different in the Force." And it kind of just shows you, it, it's just it's bigger than just Star Wars. It's kind mm-hmm. of like trying to teach a lesson here. So I think, I, whenever you go through the Clone Wars, 
there are a lot of subtle adult themes in it and i think it's fantastic well, i think they do a really good job of like te- it's a teaching moment it's really something that like i don't know if as a kid i would have noticed it but as an adult i'm watching it, i'm like oh wow like there's actually something to learn from this yeah yeah absolutely um so we get some animation of the droids running in place uh then getting stuck behind a a at an at at uh, no, not that. A- an A A T. Um, and then I mean, it so, more so, yeah, more so, fun, more fun. Yeah. So we so we go into the caves. We see their we see the 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 clones' faces. He talks about them. They go down into that valley, and he gets ambushed. He just yep. kind of sits there, right, and he's just like meditating. And they're like, Master, what should we do? The droids. I mean, they're they're hit, you know hitting a Basai, and she's like, freaking kill the guy. Mm-hmm. and uh as soon as as soon as they fire he pops up he starts like whacking at him he like he does that whole lightsaber pull out the core thing and he jumps in yep. the aat he uh one of my one of the fit one of the funniest things watching the show was yeah for me was watching the droid run in place and he gets sucked in and the, yeah the, the part mm-hmm. starts spewing out yeah dude it yeah. was it was sick yeah and then we've got yoda showing up um uh at the end uh so asajj gets a notice that all the droids have been destroyed yoda has won she and, uh, contacts the king, the, the king goes up and he's like well i guess you lost yep and count much. dooku is like what, what what what's the line that he says he says something like uh, it's like uh maybe the next king yeah, will be more cooperative maybe the next ruler and he start and that's when a side goes to swing at him and, and yeah. yoda stops her literally mid swing yeah so it just goes to show you and then he takes her sabers from her and then he gives them and back, then gives with them the fork, back? which what is the hol- which is hilarious because oh. that just shows that just shows you how powerful he really is um and then that is the end of episode one of ambush um david what was uh something that really popped out to you that we didn't talk about the animation style i i i can tell the 3d animation that it's 3d animation but there's Mm -hmm. certain there go back and watch it again guys and you'll see like you'll see the brush strokes like on a side of interest cheeks or like you'll Mm -hmm. just see like it's almost like they created like 3d characters and then actually painted brush strokes on these guys. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the art style in the film is just absolutely incredible. I yeah. love the, the exploration. I love one of the first things that Yoda says when he gets down on the moon is he says, wow, look how beautiful this place is. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's really true that the artists really take their time on these shows and yeah. really it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now guys, we are going to go into our rankings, the way our ranking system of each episode, it is, it goes like this. So there's youngling, which is bad. Padawan, which is eh. Jedi Knight, which is good. Jedi master or Jedi. No, Jedi Knight is okay. Jedi master is good. And grandmaster is excellent. Now, David, what would be your ranking of this episode? I mean, it's season one, episode one. It literally sets the tone for the entire show. I'm going to give it Grandmaster. I mean, it is. It's the first time we ever see Yoda. Yep. Or the second time we ever see Yoda kick butt in a fight. And then, arguably, it's the first time we really see him kick butt because he just takes on a thousand droids. I mean, it makes it look like nothing. Yeah. Uh, the the, the storytelling is awesome. It, Yoda's lit in a side go at the end. I mean, inadvertently, but still, like, not just you know, killing her on the spot. I mean, the, the storytelling, the whole thing is just five out of five. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Where, what, where, where are you? What are your thoughts? Um, Having seen the whole series, this one kind of, it, it's, I would say Jedi, Jedi master. It was okay. good. Okay. Um, I, and I really enjoyed, like you said, it does set the tone for the whole series, which is good. Because you need something that's going to draw people in about this show. Mm-hmm. Um, especially with the animated part of it. It's hard to really get people to buy in. But when you're in, and I say this every single time to somebody that hasn't watched The Clone Wars. Get through season two. Seasons three and four are the best 
hands down the best storytelling I have seen in Star Wars. And that's Lots saying to look forward to. a lot. Lots to um, look forward to. But yeah, I would I would give it a grandmaster, which is good. Um, guys, you'll have to let us know. Tell us in the comments. Uh, yeah, let us know what what you want to see, what you want us to talk about, what yeah, what things you want us to deep dive on. Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's 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 deep dive a little bit on uh, some Star Wars news this week. Yeah, let's get into it. So, obviously, we talked about. Um, I showed everybody. Uh, well, you can watch us on YouTube. Um, I am currently. I have my hands on the new book that came out, uh, "The Rising Storm," which is in the High Republic era. Um, which is in the High Republic era. Uh, okay, quickly for yes. those of us who aren't familiar, what is the High Republic? The High Republic is an era that happens before the prequels, before Episode One. How um, long before? Anywhere from 229, 292 BBY to 89 BBY. Now, BBY, BBY is, is before the Battle of Yavin. So mm -hmm. before episode, episode four. Four. Um, so after, so everything is based on canon wise BBY or ABY after battle, before Battle of M uh, Yavin or after Battle of Yavin. Just as like a canon reminder, yep, this is yep, how yep, we, yep. this is how we judge time. Mm -hmm. before after um so this takes place 292 years um and there's another there's another book that just came out too um yes that one's more of a young adult novel i haven't gotten into that yet what there's is that some, one called um that is called man you're is it catching the race me up. of uh yeah race to uh race to hold on crash i'll point? get it yes race to crash point got it Okay. And that's uh, by Jose uh, De Holder. Holder, Jose mm -hmm. De uh, Holz, uh, Jose. He's a really good. He does a lot of the High Republic uh, adventures comics. He's done a couple of books. He wrote um, Long Shot. Uh, that is a perspective book between uh, when Lando has the Millennium Falcon before Solo, and then Han after Solo. Um, when he has the Falcon, it's a really good book. He's a really good author. Um, Claudia Gray has a book in the High Republic called Into the Dark. She is probably hands down the greatest besides Timothy Zahn. Um, she writes Star Wars and it doesn't feel like it's hunched Business. in or pushed in yeah. or anything. It feels very I, natural when she does it. I right? really, yes, absolutely. I love her books. I love her yeah. writing. Yeah. Um, but definitely, guys, if you are wanting to get more into Star Wars, definitely go pick up a copy of Light of the Jedi, Into the Dark, um, Rising, The Rising Storm. They're going to have other things that are coming out content-wise. Um, and, yeah. Um, next topic, I'm, it's not on the notes, but I want to talk about it. So, last week... They did an interview for the showrunner of the Acolyte, which happens to be in the High Republic era, technically. Um, and Acolyte being uh, it's more Ahsoka dark Tano? side. No, 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 no. This is this is High Republic. So Ahsoka Tano isn't even alive. Is this a today. Disney? Is this a Disney? Disney Plus, Plus show. Okay. Disney okay. Plus show. Um, and the showrunner and the writer and the director. Um put out a quote that said yeah we have a girl that has never even seen star wars in our in our writing group really and, and everybody lost their mind wow lost their mind here's my take on this guys and i'm a big star wars fan does it make me worried no because she went on to say in that interview I didn't want people agreeing with me and having the same take on Star Wars. We wanted fresh faces. If and and let me tell you, if the Acolyte is somebody's first version of Star Wars, they're gonna have to hit it out of the park. They have to make it resonate resonate with people that aren't like me, that are more like David. Okay, but um, to be fair, so Acolyte it takes place before any of the movies, right? Yes. Yes. So I mean, it's a, they it's really a blank don't. Slate. Need, it's a blank slate. You need to know the mechanics. You need to know the force, and you know how lightsabers work, yeah. and that kind of stuff. But other than that, I mean, I don't need to know Luke's. I don't need to know the Anakin Skywalker story. Yeah, 
No, it's like, and it's like the Mandalorian. Yes, it's good knowledge to have what's going on, but you're basically with all of these shows, you're basically wanting to add more content to the saga. Do we have and, a release date for Acolyte yet? Um, so they are going to start filming the show February of next year. Okay. Um, most likely, it's probably going to be a early 2023 release date. Mm-hmm. Um. And there's other Disney Plus shows that we'll go into. Um, but so the next one, which was recently released, Lego came out with their set for uh, Boba Fett, um, possibly the book of Boba Fett. And they put down, they didn't put Slave One, they put down Boba Fett's ship. Mm-hmm. And everybody lost their damn minds again. Now, oh, okay, so for, hold on just a second. So, the original name of Boba, Boba Fett's ship is the Slave One, correct? Yeah, or, or just Slave One, yes, Slave mm-hmm. One, Slave yes. One. Mm-hmm. And it should be noted that Disney absolutely has every right to name it, name their ships, whatever they want to, yeah, correct? They, they own, they own the property, they own what they. they and and people are just making so much of a big deal of it because they want clickbait. That's what this is. It's clickbait. Oh, they're cancel culture, cancel culture, this cancel. No, they just want to sell more Legos. And I think that there's if you know that it's the slave one and you grew up with it being called the slave one, which I mean, in the movies, how many times is it even called that? I mean, it's it's uh, it's not like maybe a once. huge it's not the Millennium Falcon. It's not like no. they came out and they said, oh, we're going to change Millennium Falcon to be no. Millennium Bird because Falcon's offensive. No, yeah. I, I think that there's a large there's a, a large group that would call the, the word slave offensive, right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with changing the name to Boba Fett's ship. I mean, because it's it's not core. I mean, it is canon, but it's not like a core to that item. And if if it includes more people and it, it makes people feel more welcome, then more power to them. Yeah, I See, think Disney's a hundred percent in its right to do that. Oh yeah, but I, I also I, I also agree. Think I, there's there's nothing wrong with calling it Slave One. No, You're not no, no, offending yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone because no. I mean they're not it, Slave One. I mean he's he literally rounds people up and he's takes a bounty them. Hunter. Yeah, I mean it's it's not like a a happy like it's not a fairy. You know, no, it's not like no. A... Yeah, absolutely. I, I just, I feel like everybody's making, jumping to conclusions when that's, that's not the case. I mean, a lot of these Lego, uh, the, the Lego sets don't have the actual names on them. Yeah, like Anakin them. ship is called, I can't remember what it's called, but it's called something, but they put Anakin ship. Like they don't name all of these ships. You know what I mean? Like this isn't like the first time it's ever been done. You know what I mean? It's it's just a and lot it, of people trying to do clickbait, try to get views, try to get this, and it just stirs up. It, it, it just stirs up all the negativity in the Star so Wars fandom. It's almost arguable that if you were to release a Lego set and you were to call it the Slave One, mm-hmm. less people would know what that is than if you were to call it Boba Fett's ship. Exactly. So, it's possible you're that, shoehorning you know, yourself because yeah, a kid I mean, could be looking at that and being like, what's that? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So Everybody I mean, knows who Boba Fett is. It, exactly. The fact that you're calling it Boba Fett ship almost, almost, I mean, one, it doesn't exclude people, but two, it tells no. you what it is. So, I mean, yeah, if you're talking about like kids that are like, you know, 10 years old that are buying these things, I mean, the, the original Star Wars came out in the seventies. They're, they're yeah. not going to necessarily know like, Oh, the slave one. Oh, cool. That's Boba Fett ship. No, yeah, absolutely. And on that note, David, I think we're going to, I think we're, this is going to be the end of episode one. Everybody give each other a round of applause. We survived. We survived. We did it. We did it. Um, We will be releasing episodes as of right now, as of June 29th, 2021. We will be releasing episodes once a week um we might go towards two just depends but we will be back next week 
we are actually going to be hitting both um, episode two and episode three of the Clone Wars. Um, we will come back with some Star Wars news. Uh, we might throw in a uh, rank your Star Wars trill rank your Star Wars saga from best movie to least movie at the end of the show. Ooh. We want to hear your guys' takes on it. Um, you guys can follow us, the official Twitter and Instagram. Twitter yeah, is at, with- at Podwan, so P-O-D-W-A-N-S on Twitter. Um, and then at, hold on. And then if you look it up, it's the Padawan, the Padawan's pod on Instagram. Go give us a follow there. And then also follow us on TikTok. Um, we are at the Padawan podcast. Um, and we post all of our stuff. We're going to be doing social media stuff. Um, doing fun little things and whatnot, doing reviews, um, posting highlights of the podcast on there. Um, and then also go follow us on, on YouTube. Uh, we are at, I believe the Padawan podcast. If you just put it in the search bar, subscribe, like, give us a comment. Um, we will also be on Apple podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, but David, what uh, would you like to plug your social media? Or don't forget, we're we're also on. Um, we have an email account. We're, oh, we're yeah. really official. Give them the at email. The, Give them the, the email. The pod ones at gmail dot com. If you want to send in questions, we can answer them live on air. We can do all of that good stuff. Yeah, and let us know what you guys want to hear and what you guys want to see. Um, we, I mean, this is brand new to us, so we definitely want to know what you guys want because at yeah. the end of the day, that's what I think is most important. Well, us having fun is what's most important. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. But and we I, definitely want to see what you guys want to see, too. Yeah, absolutely, and I think we definitely did that. And um, on that note... We're done. We're done. Let's send may, them out. May the force be with you. Also with you.